हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू जेजी केमिस्ट्री गाइस दिस इज आवर सेकंड वीडियो ऑन रेडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द नर्स्ट इक्वेशन हाउ टू राइट द हाफ सेल रिएक्शन कैलकुलेशन ऑफ रेडॉक्स पोटेंशियल सेल पोटेंशियल एंड फ्री एनर्जी सो इफ यू आर नॉट फेमिलियर ऑफ ऑल दीज टर्म्स एंड कैलकुलेशंस यू कैन वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑन रेडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन यू कैन फाइंड द लिंक इन दिस वीडियो i'll share in the description box in this video we are going to learn about primary standards standard and formal potential difference factors affecting the equivalence point how to find out symmetrical and asymmetrical equivalence point and what is the use of auxiliary oxidizing agent and reducing agent so let's begin so we'll be solving some questions here and answer those questions the very first question is what are the important criteria for the selection of a primary standard for a solution or for a titration the questions which we are going to discuss now are important uh, for msc chemistry students especially for first year and you can use the information from this video for any competitive exam also if it falls under those topics so what is the use of primary standards basically primary standards are used to find out to determine the unknown concentration of your analyte so what should be the criteria of the primary standard to select it first of all it should have the high level of purity it should be low in reactivity so that it will not react towards your analyte itself so it means it should have high stability obviously it should be non toxic it should be inexpensive and readily available so that you can use it as a primary standard has a high equivalent weight that means it should reduce the error of the mass measurement if the equivalent weight is high here we will see by taking some example and it is should be like it should not absorb the moisture from the air that means it should not be hygroscopic if it is going to be hygroscopic it will change the mass of the total mass of the unknown molecule unknown concentration is going to be changed if it is going to absorb the moisture so it should be hygroscopic there are many examples few we will see nacl we use it as a primary standard for silver nitrate reactions again zinc powder you can use to standardize the edta solutions so here nacl and zinc powder we are using to standardize our silver nitrate and edta solutions and therefore we call nacl and zinc powder as primary standard so basically this primary standard will find out the unknown concentration of the analyte or titrant and if there is any moisture is present or anything present in this analyte or titrant then it will take care and standardize the solution so that means it is going to be ready for your titration so if the question comes the important criteria for the selection of primary standard the criteria we have seen already you can mention these criteria the next question what are the factors that affect the titration break of the redox titration titration break means the equivalence point okay what are the factor which affects the equivalence point so we'll see some variables for the redox titration curve in which we are talking about concentration first concentration you can see that the redox titration curve basically it is independent on the analyte and reagent concentration that is that curve we are talking about exception is electrode potential which will be dependent on the dilution we will see how it is going to be dependent let's say this example where we will see the nurse equation for the calculation of the electrode potential the redox potential for the above reaction e0 is the standard potential for the above reaction which will be given minus 0.0592 which is a constant divided by 2 which is a number of electron log concentration of the product divided by the concentration of the reactant so basically the electrode potential is dependent on the concentration 
but the titration curve is independent so that is the whole meaning of the sentence and second is the completeness of the reaction so whenever you have a sharp change in at the equivalence point that suggests that the reaction is completed and you will see the change in the equivalence point in the redox potential that will become larger at the equivalence point as the system is more concentrated <coughs> so what is the range the range for varying the equivalence point for redox titration curve depends on this formula e is equal to e not which is a standard reduction potential plus minus 0.0592 divided by n so basically the reduction potential is going to vary in this range only where n is the number of electron in the half reaction so you can say that larger the difference in the standard potential between the titrant and analyte the sharper will be the break in the titration curve at the equivalence point so if the potential is going to be the difference in the potential is going to be large between titrant and analyte then you are going to have the sharper end point and that's what we can say the completeness of the reaction so this is the answer factors affecting in which you can explain the concentration and the standard potential reduction potential the next question is what are the differences between standard and formal potential now we have seen standard potential and now what is formal potential so first we will see what is a standard potential represented by e not so when the concentration of both oxidized and reduced form are at unit activity the concentration is at unit activity it is considered as a standard potential you can consider this uh, reduction of ce4 cerium4 plus 2c3 plus and the reduction potential is given 1.61 volt for this and since the concentration of both is one unit activity we can say this is a standard reduction potential so this potential is calculated when the concentration of both species were at unit activity so what is forward potential it is again represented by e not only but the standard potential for the redox couple with the oxidized and reduced form at one molar concentration and with the solution condition specified so basically you can say the standard potential for the same redox couple the condition are specified here that is one molar hcl the condition is given one molar hcl and then the standard potential will be called as formal potential and you can notice here the formal potential is less than the standard potential 1.28 volt why because in the presence of acid the metal is going to form a complex and the free concentration of the species is less since the free concentration of the species is less the electrode potential is going to be less which is which belongs to the free oxidizing and reducing species and so under specified condition the standard potential which is called as formal potential will be less now next question under what condition is the curve for the redox titration is asymmetric about the equivalence point or they may ask in which condition you will get the symmetric equivalence point so we will see basically if the stoichiometry of the redox titration is symmetric if one mole of the titrant uh, titrant react with the each mole of analyte then you will get the equivalence point is symmetric means you can see it by taking the example if uh, let's say iron and cerium uh, reaction is taking place the cerium is going to oxidize the iron into iron 2 plus uh, 3 plus and get going to be reduced to c 3 plus the stoichiometry of iron and cerium is 1 is to 1 so if the stoichiometry of the reactant and analyte is 1 is to 1 you will get the symmetric end point but if you don't have the stoichiometry 1 is to 1 then the equivalence point will come either closer to the top or to the bottom and then you will get the asymmetric equivalence point in this we'll see the example titration between iron 2 plus mno4 minus so iron 2 plus is oxidized to iron 3 plus 
by magnet and the magnet is going to reduce into mn2 plus then you can balance the equation completely after balancing you can see the stoichiometry for iron which is your analyte is 5 while for your titrant the stoichiometry is 1 so basically 5 is to 1 you are going to have the asymmetric equivalence point you can notice here you don't have in the center equivalence point it is slightly on the top of the titration curve and we can say that this is the asymmetric equivalence point. Now next is what are auxiliary oxidizing and reducing agents give example of each. Now what is auxiliary agents? So basically the analyte uh, should be in oxidation reduction titration in the single oxidation state. So if your analyte is not in single oxidation state then you have to treat your analyte first with the auxiliary agent to bring it into the single oxidation state. Let's say you have an iron salt mixture. Iron salt is having either plus 2 oxidation state or plus 3. So if you want your iron to be in plus 2 oxidation state the analyte is pre-treated with the auxiliary reducing agent so that the entire plus 3 iron is converted to plus 2 by auxiliary reducing agent. If you want plus 3 state, then you have to pre-treat with auxiliary oxidizing agent. So the plus 2 will convert into plus 3 state. Some example of auxiliary reducing agents are like metals, zinc, aluminium, palladium, nickel, copper, cadmium and silver. These can be used and pre-treated with your analyte to convert into single oxidation state. Some example of auxiliary oxidizing agent like sodium bismuth, ammonium, disulfate, hydrogen peroxide. We will see what happens when sodium bismuth is going to reduce into BiO plus it is going to oxidize your analyte since it is acting as a auxiliary oxidizing agent. This is a complete balanced equation. Similarly, you can see for disulfate, the reaction is in acidic medium. It is going to reduce into sulfate, but it oxidizes the analyte into single oxidation state. And so hydrogen peroxide, you can notice a reduction reaction and it oxidizes the analyte into single oxidation state. Now the last question is how does the calculation of potential at equivalence point differ from the other points in the redox titration and you have to mention the equations. So basically we have in redox titration or any titration points like called before equivalence point, at equivalence point and after equivalence point. So how we can calculate the potential that we will see. Let's consider this example where A is your analyte which is going to oxidize into A oxidized, B oxidizes your titrant which is going to reduce into B reduce. So one is your analyte, other is your titrant, one is going to oxidize, other is going to reduce. So this is the redox reaction where oxidation reduction reaction occurs. Now how to calculate uh, the potential at equivalence point? We have a straight formula. E is equal to N1 E1 naught plus N2 E2 or naught divided by N1 plus N2. Now what are these terms where E is a reduction potential at specific concentration. E1 naught is a standard reduction potential of analyte. E2 is for your titrant. N1 and N2 are the number of electrons involved in the half cell reaction. By using this formula you can calculate the potential at equivalence point. Now how it is different uh, before equivalence point? So you can put the formula Nernst equation. Before equivalence point your analyte is in excess. So you have to put the standard potential in the form of redox couple for your analyte minus RT over NF is the constant. RTF is the constant. And the value of this constant is 0.059. N is the number of electron. Ln, the concentration of the reduced species divided by the concentration of the oxidized species. In this case, we are talking about 
analyte. So before equivalence point you can put this formula to calculate the potential. After equivalence point you will be having excess of titrant and so you have to put the standard potential for the titrant, number of electron involved here and the concentration of the titrant in the form of reduced species and then divided by the form of oxidized species. You can calculate uh, the potential at equivalence point, before equivalence and after equivalence point for redox titration where R is the case constant, F is the Faraday constant and the T is the absolute temperature and we know that it involves the number of electrons in the half cell reaction. So basically you should know how to write down the half cell reaction. If you are not sure how to write down, you can watch the previous video on redox titration. I will share the link. Then you will be able to write the half cell reaction after watching that video and solve the problems. So this is going to be probably last question. Explain the oxidation reactions of potassium permanganate in acid basic and neutral condition. So we will see what are the factors or the reactions occurs in each medium. So first we will see in acidic medium. Potassium permanganate acting as a titrant. You can see the permanganate which is pink in color convert into colorless magnesium 2 plus at equivalence point and so it signals the end point after adding the single drop of excess of magnate which turns your colorless solution to a pink color solution. You can see these are in different oxidation state and the reaction is completely balanced. So this is going to be an acidic medium. In neutral or alkaline solution the magnet is convert in, converted into the magnesium dioxide, MnO2 solid, which is going to be precipitated as brown solid. And so signals the end point. In a strong basic solution, like if you have 2 molar NaH solution, the reaction is going to be like this, where MnO4 minus is converted to MnO4 2 minus and signals the change in color to green. So if you have a strong basic condition, you will get green color. These are the chemical reaction in different medium for potassium permanganate. So we have discussed few questions from the redox citation curve. I hope it will help you for your examination. All the best, happy learning.